give a little historical context and I'm going to talk a little bit about my hometown. Um, we balanced the budget in the 90s for four consecutive years, not by cutting spending, but by slowing the growth of spending below inflation and a robust U.S.-led global economy brought revenues into the government that surpassed expenses and the budget got balanced. It was principally led by one sector of our economy called the information technology sector. The Bill Gates world that we enjoyed for 20 years of U.S. supremacy in the information sector balanced our federal budget with robust uh, exports. That's the truth. We didn't cut spending. We slowed the growth of spending, and that's admirable, especially in the world we live in today. So if we can slow the growth of spending again and generate in the energy sector the same kind of U.S. leadership on the greening of manufacturing, the greening of the corporate world, the greening of our residential applications, the greening at every level of our society, we can lead and balance the budget. I, try, I totally believe that, and I also tell you it's the only way we're going to balance the budget. It's the only way we're ever going to get back to a responsible stewardship of the financial sector is for us to take this on, not as a burden, but as an obligation. Now, we're going to disagree about how to get there. I'm not saying we're all going to sign on to every same legislative initiative because there are several paths to get there. I frankly think that the regulatory path should be the last one pursued, uh, but there are a whole lot of things we can do together for certain. And i got to tell you, that my hometown's an example. I grew up in Chattanooga, Tennessee. A couple of Tennessee people in the room, so you may know the Chattanooga story. We were on the top five dirty, airless cities in the 1970s. They called us the Dynamo of Dixie. We were a major manufacturing center. We made brake parts and all these heavy manufactured things. When I grew up there, the air stunk. I don't mind telling you. You go downtown, it stunk. It smelled like burning tires all the time. And you'd cross Missionary Ridge, you couldn't see Lookout Mountain or Signal Mountain, across the city that bad. Today, number one, we use the private sector to actually exceed the minimum standards of federal air quality in the 70s. Our private sector said, we're not just going to meet them, we're going to exceed them. And it is a total lemons to lemonade story of a turnaround to an, eco, to, to an environmentally uh, wonderful city, reclaimed our riverfront, and embraced the notion of sustainability when a lot of people thought it was for wimps. <laughs> and I can tell you today it was for warriors because today we have next generation manufacturing moving in, making what? A polysilicon for the solar energy. Making what? Environmentally friendly automobiles. Making what? Environmental technologies and manufacturing like you haven't seen because we are a city that brings sustainability. It wasn't a liability, it was an asset. People are moving there and expanding their manufacturing centers because we've embraced this. So it really just depends on whether you want to get beat about the head or whether you want to be leading. That's what this really means. And for our country, it's the defining question of our generation. Are we going to take this challenge and turn it into a great opportunity to grow our economy again and lead the world? Now, I have a little different tact than a lot of the conservation environmental community because I think we can lead the world in nuclear manufacturing and that's a big question still uh, in, in the world but I think we have to do a lot of these things and more to have the capacity and the competitiveness that we need but we can do it in an environmentally friendly way embrace the notion of sustainability that's what corporations now realize the quicker they get it the better their bottom line improves it is the not only the in vogue thing to do let me tell you this is not a fad this is a trend. There's a big difference between a trend and a fad. This is here to stay. And it's good that it's here to stay. And there's a, there's a better way to do it. And then well, we're going to have the disagreements about how to do it. But the fact is we need to all agree we need to do it. That, that's what I came to say today. And, I, and I've got kind of a life uh, experience to have seen this firsthand at home, seen it in the corporate world, and I've seen it here in the federal government. We need the revenues to ever grow our own economy again to lead the world in the, the, what I call the <coughs> e-tech world, energy technologies, energy technologies, the energy solutions for the future, because the nexus between the environment, energy, and our national security is the most important policy nexus of our time. It, recognize it. Recognize it. Take advantage of it. Steve Israel, you're next.